and mission and passion, compassion and action. So often we use all these words, you know, pretty much every day in and day out, but so beautifully connected together and so beautifully expressed. Thank you so much, Mr. Gopalakrishna. Thanks a lot. I'm now delighted to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Sanjay Kapoor, Head of Corporate Communications of LNT Metro, ex-CEO of LNT Hitex, a self-made and inspirational leader who has risen from a sales manager to a CEO. Sanjay is also associated with globally reputed names like ITW USA, Larson and Tubro India, Borneo Technical Thailand, and many more. Personally, I really admire his ability to adeptly manage crisis and the way he ensures that the company he is involved with is always on a path to success. He has been featured as one of the trailblazers of Hyderabad in the first Trailblazer Coffee Table book in December 2011. He is also a recipient of most promising entrepreneurship, Sanjay, for taking out the time and joining us here today. Please help me in, in welcoming him to the stage. Mr. Sanjay. I don't think I deserve so kind words from Shalini, what she has said. And it is always difficult to speak after the distinguished speaker like uh, Mr. Gopalakrishna has spoken. So it's my, my job is definitely going to be very tough. But what I can assure you is that um, I'm going to walk through the personal experiences of my life, and one of them, because if you know, want to know more of them, you probably have to get in touch with Vijay for his paid uh, you know, programs like this. But uh, I think uh, what is going to be interesting is that whatever uh, Mr. Gopalakrishna has just told you, uh, I'm going to tell a personal experience of that, which is going to you know, put forward each and every word of his, or each and everything which he has discussed in his uh, you know, talk with you. But before we do that, I always love to have an interactive session rather than a monologue session of mine. So I'm going to involve you guys. I need to understand your perspective, and then we'll go to that uh, session or talk of mine. So I'll come there instead of standing here. That will be better. How many of you work for yourself? And how many of you say, I never work for anybody. I work for myself. For me, the experience which I gain is the most important thing for me. Second question I would like to ask you is, be happy. I want to know from a youngster, why are you going to go for a work? I'm sorry? Self-satisfaction. I'm very surprised with this good answer. Because I have been told that all youngsters go to earn money. Actually, I don't go to earn money. I am very thankful to my employer that they have given me an opportunity to learn, yet they are paying for that. That's the way I look at it. So, let's get into the leadership aspect of what Mr. Rahar has said. How many of you sitting out there are leaders? Very good. Very good. I, I think we have, we have got a very good audience here. You know? So who is the youngest leader have you ever seen in your life? Is it a tough question? That's it. The youngest person who is a leader is a youngster. Let me tell you, no leader can be a leader unless or until they are fathers to them. So the youngest boy or girl in your home draws all the people in the family towards him or her. And that's why he and the largest leader we all know, probably one of them is Mahatma Gandhi. So what is leadership? In my opinion, leadership is a person, or a leader is a person who can make ordinary people work together to achieve the extraordinary things. That's what my definition of leadership is. Now I'll just walk you through uh, something of my life experience when I joined this great company called Last Man Tubo, way back in 1986. And uh, this is a lifetime experience. There are many stories like this. But this is one of them which is at the very, very nascent stage when I started my career way back in 1986. And uh, something which has embedded into my uh, you know, thought process and really helped me to move on and on in my life from there. 
I joined LNT in 1986 and I was posted in a place called Udaipur, city of lakes. I never knew when I came to Hyderabad, actually the city of lakes to Hyderabad, not Udaipur. But it's, it's, it's wrong now that out of 14, 1500 lakes, we have got only 800 lakes. So anyway, so what uh, I was posted there in Udaipur and uh, when I landed there, I came to know that from last three months, 11 people have left that last and to throw for having a posting in Udaipur. So I was very disheartened and nobody was ready to tell me that why the six, seven people have left here and why I have been put into such a bad situation that I have no one to look at, nobody to guide me on that. So I went to my boss and he was not prepared to tell me. That particular division of Larson and Google is known as detective division and I can bet you that there is no better sales and marketing training organization in the world who imparts that kind of a sales and marketing training as what LNT does. And I am very privileged that I attended that training of 40 days before I was posted in Udaipur. And I call that training as a commando training. It is a civilian commando training. And I learned discipline in my life because on the very second day when I went for the training, my trainer told me that good afternoon, you are late by five minutes. And thereafter, I have never been late by minutes. And I am very happy today. I had a lot of experience with Mr. Shekhar Agarwal. He has been a mentor to me in so many ways and I am so privileged that he is sitting and listening uh, this talk today. My experience with Pepsi has, you know, I am very pleasantly surprised that people are on time today. And that is something we all as a body is probably learn a lot of. So coming back to what happened, I was posted there and then I tried to find out and nobody told me. I was very lucky that a guy who has left the organization just before me was also there. And he met me and he told me what was the real truth. The real truth was that LNT has huge business in Udaipur. People know about their large Hindustan zinc mines and smelters which used to be there during that period. They are still there, Vivanta is owning them now. So this gentleman who was our distributor was one of the richest and topmost people of there. And he was our dealer. He was a dealer because LNT needed him for many, many larger projects. And I was representing a very small department which used to sell in some lakhs and probably in a crore of rupees. So they were not interesting to support me as an employee, but support the distributor who was the richest person of that city. And I was introduced to that person very first day. Old guy, I still remember his name. His name was Mr. M. S. Muria. So he told me, you are a young kid, welcome to the city. People have not been able to do business and I am looking forward to you to help me out. So I told them, well, I am actually looking forward to you because you are such a, you know, influential person in the city and I want you to guide me in that particular thing. And I can assure you that either I will be here in six months or the business will be here or you will be here. I was a very blunt person in that period, so am I now. But this, I need to explain that. It's that this is not the way you talk to people like this. Like this and anyway, he left. I could not do a single test of business in the first four months of my posting there. Imagine a situation, a young guy out of a college, put into a particular city from a great company like us in Tukro, a zero business in four months. And our company had a very, you know, strange kind of thing that every month, all the serious people have to meet at one location and talk about their good things, what they have done, how much achievement they have done, how much money they have earned from the company. And I used to be a poor chap sitting in this meeting with my head down and trying to tell to the people I have not done anything. It was very embarrassing. My bosses or my leaders, so-called leaders, used to listen to me and used to tell me that, uh, well, you need to find out a way for yourself. Ultimately, everything depends on money and contribution by you. So nobody was prepared to help me directly. There was also a situation and we were put into a very, you know, very stringent perspective that we can only do the business through the distributor. LNT will not supply the product direct. That used to be the system. So I was helpless. Anyway, so this same guy who has given me the you know details about this place also told me that there is one guy who is NP Mr. MS Moody, but he will not give you a single weapon business. I said, who is he? 
He said he is the workshop manager of the central workshop which controls all the zinc mines of this city. But he is not going to give any business to Muslim. He is ready to give the business to LNK. So I said, fine, give me some more details about it. He told me in his talk, what is this guy? He's about 45 years of age and so and so and this and why. And during the discussion, he also told me that he is very fond of Vince Navy Cup. It used to be a passion of smoking during that period. So it got entered into my thoughts and I made it a point that I will go to that gentleman, sit in his workshop every week. Wednesday used to be the holiday for Zawar Mines of Hindustan Zinc and I will go on Thursday morning and sit in his office every day with two packets of Navy Cut in my pocket. The first day he saw me, he ignored me. After the, he said, I'm not going to give you any business. I offered him a cigarette, he got a of the Sujabo, Sujagi, you know, this guy will relent to serve the matter. So we, we continued this for four weeks. I was very, very clear, I used to drive motorcycle 40 kilometers from Udaipur to this particular place. So they are sitting in his office, do nothing, just observe. He lost his patience after four weeks. And he told me, you're coming every day here. I've told you I'm not going to give you the business. So why are you wasting your time and my time? I said, look, you are a, such a learned person. This is a huge workshop. I am a mechanical uh, engineer. I want to learn from you. Is there a problem? He said, there is no problem. Keep coming. Two weeks passed. I used to bring some small gifts for him and keep giving him uh, whenever I used to. Very small things, not more than a cigarette or something or a lighter or something like that. He was a Bengali guy, so he used to smoke a lot. One day he told me, next time when you are coming Sunday, you need to come to my house. To have it. And I'm going to make an arrangement for you in the distance. So the ice was breaking. I went there. I went there with some sweets. His wife was very happy. That was the first time I came to know that they don't have any issues. So she treated me like a son, offered me very good food, and I enjoyed it. During the discussion, she came to know that I come from a place called Kota in Rajasthan, which is very, very famous for Kota sarees. So I offered her the next time when I go to my home, I'll bring a sari for she was very happy and I did it. I got it aside for her. Now this relationship is developing. Four months passes. This guy does not give any business. And he is very clear that I will not give it. After four months, there was a job in that workshop which I saw, which was a shop which was completely broken into two pieces. And uh, he was about to change that shop to the new one. And I come from a maintenance site, detective, basically a maintenance business. So I told him, uh, Mr. Sarkar, I can repair this. I had no confidence. Let me tell you very clearly, I had no confidence to repair it. He said, are you sure? I can guide you as a well wisher you cannot repair this. As it is, I am not going to give you a business, you will have the bad name as ever for LNT also. I said, no, I will give you a try, you give me the business for this. He said, I am warning you, you are going to be a failure. But I want you to fail. And that's why I'm giving you this <laughs> So 30,000 rupees first ever business LNT got from that government mine because of that. I was very lucky, God was with me probably, or my technical strength was good. That shaft worked for about two years. And it is like an human body. If a shaft works for first hour, it will obviously work for two years. Like if you, if the doctor says in an ICU, if you pass six hours or eight hours, you're fine, you will not die. Same in the situation of machine parts. <laughs> So this is what happened. This guy was now thrilled and had some guilt in his heart somewhere that this guy is consistently coming every week after week and not budging. I need to do something. So he called me and he said, I am prepared to give you the business now, but I have conditions. And these conditions are, I will require 5% of the total business. And I want some of that in advance with no guarantee of business. I don't want the material to be supplied by Mr. M. S. Modi. LNT has to supply his guy. I'm a young, small guy. Nobody listens to me in LNT. LNT is a big organization. You don't listen to your people in your own offices. You make your own decisions. So I told them, it's going to be very good. He said, take it or leave it. You will never get a business. I went home. I thought about it. I got collected 5,000 rupees and went to him next week and gave him 5,000. I said, this is what I can give you as an advance. But now I also have certain conditions. 
My condition is, whenever you will release the order, the order has to be released on a Tuesday afternoon. And whosoever is going to release the order, because it's a government process, it will go to the purchase department and many and many places. I don't want it to be leaked at least for 24 hours to Mr. M.S. Moodya. Because Mr. M.S. Moodya sits with CMD, he drinks with him, he dines with him, he do everything, he will come to know. He said, that you leave it to me, I will do it for you. You guys will not believe, I got a 20 lakh rupee worth of order. Made on last and two. Tuesday released, Wednesday was a holiday. I took that order and I went to my headquarters with the Jaipur that time. Incidentally, my boss boss was also there on that day. And they all grilled me. They told me, you are not doing anything, you have to find the way. You need to find, you, it's your business, we have given you the target, you need to come out with that thing. Otherwise, you will not grow in your life, in, in this organization. I said, you guys are not with me. What can I do with this mighty guy? I have nothing to share with you. You have to find out a way to change him. He said, you show me the way. How can I change? How can I go and tell to the other people that this guy is not doing it? Show me. I said, what, what way you want to show it? He said, bring an order. Collect an order and then we will do something. I said, fine. If I get you an order, I have two conditions. Will you supply directly? The guy was in a heat. I provoked him. So he said, yes, I will supply it directly. I said, fine. Second thing I want to tell you is that I want this particular distributor to be removed. Not because I want it, because I want energy to be there. Will you be able to do that? He said, we'll do it. I said, fine. I took out the order of 20 lakhs rupees and gave it to him. Believe me, LNT is great in that. And their bosses asked, what is leadership all about? If you march into Arishan Kagar de Te, Admi wo hai, jiske piche dunia chalti hai. Wo nahi, jo dunia ke piche That's the difference between leaders and non-leaders. So I have nothing more to say. I have many, many stories like this, which I am a man of experience and practical nature. I don't believe in all other things. If you need to hear more stories about it, I am a hardcore salesman. Nothing else I know about. I can sell anything in the world. But I can share my experiences with you. I will be delighted to do that. Talk to me to become more about it. And thank you very much.